I'm now traveling by metro to Taipei. From there I'll catch a bus to the spectacular Yellow Geo Park before making a brief visit to Keelung. Tongsao Our alien landscape you see behind me is known as the Yellow Geo Park, one of Taiwan's most famous natural attractions. Absolutely incredible. Now, Yellow is most famous for these rocks, which contain these bizarre examples of what's known as honeycomb weathering. Right here, you can clearly see why they call this honeycomb weathering. Started to expand, creating these holes, weakening the rock, even vulnerable to other types of weathering. And up here we have a resistant cap, and right here we have a softer layer that are running away. So here we can see two forms of weathering: honeycomb weathering and differential weathering. Oh, how cool is this? We have a fossilized sand dollar right here. It's funny because I live on the other side of the Pacific, so it's interesting to see the western side of the Pacific for the first time.
Well, this is cool. We have this arch formation right here. We're on our way to Kilong. The area of what's now Kilong was first settled by the Spanish in 1624, making this the first area in northern Taiwan to be settled by Europeans. Centuries of war and conquest led to occupation by the Dutch, Chinese, and Japanese but also the development of international trade. For a brief period in the 1980s, Keelung was the seventh largest container port in the world. It is currently the center of Taiwan's fishing industry. Today, it's still a popular port of call for cruise ships and ferries from mainland China, making it one of the island's most popular coastal destinations. It also has a reputation for being one of the world's most rainiest and gloomiest cities which has earned the nickname the Rainy Port. Today, Keelung is a relatively modern port city, but if you know where to look, one can still find signs of the city's past. When I decided to pair Keelung with our visit to Yelu today, I completely forgot that this is one of the rainiest cities in Taiwan. I read that it rains almost every day here, so we're kind of taking shelter beneath the trees. But it doesn't look like it's gonna let up any time soon, so I think we're just gonna go. Well, this beautiful building is the home of the Zhang Yuan. Ceremony, and this is the site of the most spectacular summer ghost festival on the island. Well, obviously, I had planned to see a lot more in Kiwan, but it doesn't look like this rain is gonna let up anytime soon, so I think we're just gonna call it a day and head back to Taipei. The next morning, I catch a bus to Taiwan's gold country to visit the picturesque hillside villages of Jiufen, Jinghuashi, and Xuanandong. Because it was originally home to just nine families, 
founded during the reign of the Qing Dynasty, this once isolated village quickly grew into a bustling boomtown after the discovery of gold in the 1890s during the Japanese occupation of Taiwan. By the 1930s, the town was so prosperous it became known as Little Shanghai. During World War II, the Japanese military used British POWs to work the region's gold mines. After the war, the mining industry fell into decline, and the last mine closed in 1971. The village remained virtually forgotten for nearly a decade, until the success of the 1989 film City of Sadness, set in Zhu Fen, brought the town back into the spotlight. Since 1990, it has grown to become one of the island's most popular tourist destinations. The region is now a popular day trip destination for people looking to escape the hustle and bustle of Taipei. pedestrian only Because of all of these shops, all of you consider Jiu Fen to be a tourist trap, and maybe it sort of is, but it's also an excellent place to visit traditional 19th century Chinese architecture. Ten cmentarz widać. A na co się cemetery? Nie, tu był. O oh, wow. A może jeszcze inny nie? Bo tam gdzie jest tamtąd. The mountain you see behind me is Mount Kilong and the local language Kilong actually translates to chicken cage because if you look at the mountain from a specific angle, it looks like a battery cage, but I also read if you look at it from a different angle, it looks like a pregnant woman laying on her back. We're gonna go check out that temple down there. We came across this beautiful Taoist temple.
I'm now taking a bus to Jinwashi to visit the region's famous golden waterfall. Jinwashi's history dates back to 1890. A former gold and copper town, Jinwashi was notorious during World War II for being the site of the Kinkaseki POW camp, where the Japanese imprisoned captured British soldiers and forced them to work the gold mines. and interacted with the pyrite and inner guide to create a chemical reaction in this beautiful orange color you see here which has given the falls the nickname the golden water you guys review them all right here you can see the other side of mount Keelong. can see the ruins of some old gold smelters which were built in 1933 and they were used by miners to extract gold and copper from iron ore that was mined up here in the nearby mountains.